it's train spotting. It stars Ewan McGregor, uh, Robert Carlyle, and a whole other bunch of quite famous uh, Scottish English actors that you've probably seen in other things that I can't remember the names of right now. But um, yeah, so Train Spotting is a movie that I've put off watching for a long time. Not because I haven't wanted to watch it, just because I've never got around to watching it. Uh, it's a really great movie about drugs and addiction, but it was a movie that I perhaps wasn't overly astound, uh, like amazed or. Um, I didn't enjoy it perhaps as much as I thought I was going to enjoy it. I, I Don't get me wrong, I loved it, I thought it was a really great movie, but it just wasn't the perfect movie that I was hoping it would be. So maybe it was my own fault, maybe I, um, my you know, expectations were too high or something, or I was expecting it to be something it wasn't, I don't know. But I did enjoy it, and I can understand why people love this movie, because it is really good. Um, Ewan McGregor plays a character called Mark, I think, I can't remember, I'm not too good on remembering the names of people in this but yeah I think he plays a character called Mark who is a heroin addict he starts off the movie at a really sort of low point in his life he actually climbs into the world the Scotland's worst toilet uh, which is just disgusting he climbs inside of it it's covered in all nasty things uh, he climbs inside to retrieve some drugs that he actually drops into it and it just shows how sort of low he goes to get you know just to get a fix but he does, at the start of the movie, he is trying to get off heroin. And it's a really interesting part where he sort of um, comes up with this sort of... Like, all these things that he needs to sort of get off uh, heroin. And when he actually does get off heroin later on in the movie, he doesn't use any of those. It's all down to his parents, who are kind of really... Not necessarily treated badly by Mark. I think it is... It is an interesting angle of the film, his parents, because it's kind of, not only is, you know, Mark's life being ruined because of the drugs, but in a way, it's affecting his parents as well, and a person in particular that affects is his friend, Tommy. Now, at the start of the movie, Tommy is um, kind of this, he's quite different to Mark, because he's, he doesn't take drugs, he's one of Mark's friends, and... He's kind of in a place in his life where he's really happy. And he ends up breaking up with his girlfriend because of a tape that Mark stole. It was like a sex tape of them together. And Mark actually steals it. Um, and it gets, you know, Tommy into a load of trouble. He breaks up with his girlfriend and he ends up trying heroin um, because Mark is on it. And it basically ruins Tommy's life. And as Mark is... Later on in the movie, I'm, I'm trying not to give too much away, but you could probably guess a lot of where the movie goes you know it starts off with him being completely addicted to, to drugs and he tries to get on off them as the movie goes on and as mark starts to get off the drugs tommy gets even deeper into them and it, that was an interesting angle of the movie as well um so yeah i mean basically the plot of the movie is about drugs this character of mark who narrates the story um he's kind of a likable drug addict i guess um but he he narrates the movie and you follow him through it, how he, his life begins to change. Everybody knows the beginning of this movie where he's being chased uh, with his friend Spurred, I think, um, down the street by some security guards because they've been shoplifting. Everybody knows that scene. It's really great where he does sort of a monologue at the start. Well, yeah. Um, um, it's just a really great movie. It's got an amazing soundtrack. One of my favourite things about this movie is the soundtrack. It's got some really great music uh, by like Iggy Pop and other people. Uh, Iggy Pop is mentioned a lot in this movie. I don't know why, maybe... Danny Ball has a thing for Iggy Pop. I'm not sure. Perhaps he's a fan of them. Him, sorry. Um, and also, it has some really great direction, really great imagery in this movie. Like the scene I said where he climbs into the toilet. That is an, a really brilliant scene. And also when he takes... Uh, after not having heroin for a while, he has another fix. And he sort of sinks into the ground. And you see it from his perspective. So you see like him going deeper and deeper. Like he's going into like a grave or something. It's really really great imagery in this movie so yeah train spotting really great movie definitely check it out if you're into danny boyle's work um i really enjoyed it but it just wasn't a 10 out of 10 movie that i perhaps was hoping it to be so next movie i watched is um by a new sort of horror director it's splinter uh this movie is um it, it won a couple of awards i think at sort of different horror festivals and i actually really enjoyed this movie it's basically about a parasite sort of creature, um, which you can... It, the whole splinter aspect of the movie is it has these kind of splinters growing off of it. And one one of the characters who is a convict... Um, well, basically what it is, is this couple uh, are on like, sort of a camping holiday. It kind of goes wrong when their tent doesn't work. So they, they get back in their car and are on their way to find a motel when their car is hijacked by this convict guy and his girlfriend. And whilst they're doing... Whilst they're being hijacked, they drive off and they end up um, 
running over this sort of creature and it pops their tyre. So the convict gets out to help change the tyre and he gets pricked by this thing. This splinter goes in his hand. And as the movie sort of goes on, it starts, starts to get really bad and you can see all these black things growing on his hand and stuff. But when they get to the uh, gas station, because the radio, I think, heats over, so they need to buy some coolant from this gas station. And when they get there, this creature has already attacked the guy who runs the gas station and he's become sort of this crazy... Um, monster which remind me a lot of i think it's on the grudge uh the japanese movie the grudge when the girl walks on that you know her arms like break and she sort of snaps back together it's just like that but better in this movie it's just really great how this creature who's kind of like a, a just a bloody mess of a human uh like a human's remains uh just snaps back together like the arms snap as it moves and just it breaks and there's all these spines coming out of it it's, it's just a really fantastic looking monster and um, it's just them trying to survive in this uh, gas station whilst these things are attacking. And like, there's one point where the hand of one of the creatures gets ripped off and it crawls inside. And it does have a lot of, kind of, in a way that reminded me of a lot of Evil Dead 2. It was kind of a throwback to that with this crawling hand that crawls along the floor, a lot like Evil Dead 2. Um, if you like horror movies, I think you'll really like this one. It's, it's just a really fun great horror movie that I wasn't expecting to enjoy as much as I did. It was really good. And it definitely leaves it open for kind of a franchise i guess a splinter franchise which um, if they did it if i think if the same director come back and did a sequel it'd be great but if it was in the hands of someone else i don't know because the direction in this movie is really good it's very frantic um especially towards the end when the creature actually gets inside the gas station and chases everyone it's very frantic and one one of the only things that bug me about this movie is obviously this convict guy um hijacked the couple's car takes them, you know, gets them involved in the whole thing. It's basically his fault that they're stuck in this gas station. And there's one point in the movie where they're actually sat drinking beers with him and having a laugh, which I kind of thought was weird. But then, at the same time, it was like, at the start of the movie, I hate this convict guy. I thought he was a complete, just horrible, evil man. And then you kind of end up quite liking him by the end of the movie. So it's it's weird. I don't know. It was. I suppose it's a good thing in terms of how the film goes, because you end up liking him, but... I don't know. It was good. I enjoyed it. Um, definitely recommend this one to anyone who likes horror. It's directed by a guy called Toby Wilkins. This is his first horror movie, I think. I think he's a British director. Um, it's an American movie. It's not a British horror movie. Um, but yeah. Check this one out. Really good. Uh, Splinter. Enjoyed it. So, that is it. Uh, catch you guys next week.